Welcome to English. My name's Hannah Dodwell and I'm incredibly proud to head up English here at UTS. We're a department of true lovers of literature and it's here that we help to inspire you too. We use stories, poems, plays and non-fiction to help you to explore your own lives, your values and your morals within the wider world. We will do all we can here to ensure that you leave GTS with excellent GCSE results. In 2019, our results were the fourth best in the county of Devon, with 76% achieving a grade four or above. But we also want you to leave here being confident, literate young adults uh, with a lifelong love of reading and of learning. Let's meet the team. Hi, my name is Mrs Richards. Um, I'm an English teacher here. Welcome to my classroom. This is one of my favourite books. It's The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon. Um, I read this when I was about 20 at university, which was brilliant for me because at that point I already knew that I wanted to go into a career of teaching. Um, but my knowledge of autism and especially Asperger's was particularly limited, so this was a really good eye-opener for me. Um, I absolutely love it. It's really witty, really funny. It made me laugh, it made me cry. So if you fancy a good read, then head over to this one. Um, one of my favourite things that we're doing in Year 7 at the moment, or the first things you do, will be to study Frankenstein, um, the play adaptation. Um, it's really good, I'm sure you've heard of it. This is one of my favourite bits. The storm is still raging outside and there are flashes of lightning. The monster is enormously tall and powerfully built. His open eyes are hideous, red-rimmed and glaring in a waxy yellow face. His lips are black, scars crisscross his cheeks and his face is framed with matted black hair. He is naked to the waist, he wears nothing but simple breeches. The monster stands there, swaying as Frankenstein moves back to get a better look at his creation. Then the monster raises a hand and Frankenstein reaches up to touch it. My name is Miss Couch and I'm going to share with you my favourite book. So this is my favourite book and it's Alice in Wonderland. I particularly like this copy because my mum bought it for me when I was about 13. I didn't know why I wanted the book, I just thought the cover was really, really pretty. And so I started reading it and I fell in love with it. It has some amazing words like Jabberwocky and the added benefit of lots of illustration, which is wonderful. I just love the mystery and all the cute creatures in it, and I strongly recommend that you read it. This is a collection of all of those Carol's works. I'm going to be reading to you an extract of one of the texts we study in Year 8. So we do a childhood prose, and this is a part from my favourite extract, and it's about a love of scorpions. By crouching under the wall at night with a torch, I managed to catch some brief glimpses of scorpions' wonderful courtship dances. I saw them standing, claws clasped, their bodies raised to the skies, their tails lovingly entwined. I saw them waltzing in slow circles among the moss cushions, claw in claw. But my view of these performances was all too short, for almost as soon as I switched on the torch, the partners would stop, pause for a moment, and then, seeing what was going on, to extinguish the light, they would turn around and walk away, claw in claw, side by side. They were definitely beasts that believed in keeping to themselves. I could have kept a colony in captivity, and I probably wouldn't been able to see the whole of the courtship, but the family had forbidden me, scorpions in the house, despite my arguments in favour of them. Then one day I found a fat female scorpion on the wall, wearing what I thought first was a pale fawn fur coat. Closer inspection proved this to be a strange garment was made of a mass of tiny babies clinging to the mother's back. I was enraptured by this family and I made up my mind to smuggle them into the house and up to my bedroom so I might keep them and watch them grow. With infinite care I manoeuvred the mother and family into the matchbox and hurried to the villa. You can only think what chaos a matchbox of scorpions caused in his house. I love reading this because all the kids get really excited. Hello, my name's Mrs Vanessa. I'm an English teacher. I've been here for many years now. And I also am literacy coordinator at GTS. Um, so I, I deal with things like uh, reading and spelling and writing across the school. I'd like to share with you my favourite book, which is by my favourite author as well, Terry Pratchett. I've chosen The Wee Men as my favourite. 
because it's the first in a series of books which feature Tiffany Aching as a character, and she's my favourite too. Um, it's funny, it's fantastical, it's deeply moving, and I think uh, I think any Year 7 would enjoy reading this. This is a book that I've chosen to read an extract from because uh, it's from a new topic that we study in Year 9, a non-fiction topic about the suffragettes. So this is the very first extract from Chapter 1, which is called Strange Happenings Outside a Playhouse. You tell me that, weak, that women are weak-willed. You tell me that women are weak-spirited and foolish and ignorant and only fit to stay at home and raise the children. The woman on the orange crate paused, then added, hardly seems fair on the children, does it? There was laughter from the crowd. Evelyn, always fascinated by the suffragettes, said, hold up a minute, can't you, to Teddy, who stopped, him, who stopped at once. A man in the crowd called, a woman's sphere is in the home. Do you contest it? Her sphere, yes, not her prison. You may as well say a man's sphere is the office and take away his vote as well. More laughter. This time Evelyn joined in. Oh, come. It was an older, rather apoplectic looking gentleman. A woman doesn't need a vote. Her husband votes for her. And if she's not happy with his choice, she has a hundred ways to make him change his mind. That's a woman's proper influence, not the ballot box. Indeed, the suffragette was enjoying this. You could tell. It's rather hard on the unmarried woman or the widow, though, isn't it? And a husband. More laughter. I'm not sure your idea of proper influence is very complimentary to either gender. A young woman in a fur coat was pushing her way past Evelyn. Oh, she said to the man beside her. I do think these women are perfectly horrid, as if any lady would want to stand on a nasty box and shout things at delivery boys. Evelyn bristled. She opened her mouth, but Teddy put his hand on her arm. Cool it, he said. Then, before Evelyn could argue, he nodded at the suffragette on the orange crate. She's doing rather well, isn't she? I think she's splendid, said Evelyn. There we go. OK, hello, my name is Mr Pettit, and I'm going to tell you about one of my favourite reads, and which is actually a book that I only read for the first time when I was an adult, but it is definitely a book that you... I would recommend you pick up and I think every child and every adult should read it. This is because I love history and this book is set at a particular time in history. I'm not going to tell you anything more about it other than the narrator is a little boy and friendship is really central to this story. But it's got some really important lessons in it. Okay, I would also like to share with you one of the highlights of the curriculum for me, which is reading this play called An Inspector Calls. And it's a play that we start at the end of year nine and then we continue into year 10. So we start some of the GCSE texts and it's full of suspense, it's full of tension and it's got some really important themes about responsibility and society and community and the way we treat each other. And I want to read you a really short extract by the inspector in the title, an inspector calls. He's a police inspector. But just remember this. One Eva Smith has gone, but there are millions and millions and millions of Eva Smiths and John Smiths still left with us. With their lives, their hopes and fears, their suffering and chance of happiness all intertwined with our lives and what we think and say and do. We don't live alone. We are members of one body. We are responsible for each other. And I tell you that the time will soon come when if men will not learn that lesson, then they will be taught it in fire and blood and anguish. Good night. A really powerful speech. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mrs Tillier and I'm proud to be an English teacher here at Great Torrington School. My favourite book is Frankenstein. Frankenstein was written in 1818 and is supposedly the first science fiction book ever written. But do not worry, you don't have to read this page for page. You lucky people will get to do Philip Pullman's Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, but edited and turned into a play by Philip Pullman. How lovely is that? I am going to read you one of my favourite poems. It's called Dolce et Decorum Est, and it's written by Wilfred Owen. Bent double like old beggars under sacks, knock-kneed, coughing like hags, we cursed through sludge, 
till on the haunting flares we turned our backs and towards our distant rest began to trudge. Men marched asleep, many had lost their boots, but limped on, bloodshod. All went lame, all blind, drunk with fatigue, deaf even to the hoots of gas shells dropping softly behind. Gas, gas, quick boys, an ecstasy of fumbling, fitting the clumsy helmets just in time. But someone still was yelling out and stumbling and floundering like a man in fire or lime. Dim through the misty panes and thick green light, as under a green sea, I saw him drowning. 